ultrasound of postmenopausal bleeding. We oftentimes get such cases where a patient has presented with bleeding postmenopause and they are concerned about postmenopausal bleeding. So what do we really mean by menopause? WHO defines it as a permanent cessation of the menstrual cycles which occurs due to a loss of the ovarian follicular activity. But from our perspective, if you look at it, we define or we accept postmenopausal bleeding as a vaginal bleeding which has occurred in a woman whose last menstrual cycle was more than 12 months prior to this event. That means more than one year back she had her previous cycle or cessation of periods for more than a year is considered as menopausal state. So why do patients get so concerned? Why do ladies get so concerned when they get vaginal bleeding post menopause? That's because endometrial cancer is a leading gynecological malignancy. So a postmenopausal bleeding ends up being a matter of concern for the lady and when she presents to the clinician, to the clinician too. But one thing that we have to realize is that just like endometrial thickness can vary, we are oftentimes the first line of investigation ends up being imaging. In imaging, what we look for is the first thing we see is the endometrial thickness. Just like endometrial thickness varies a lot during her reproductive age group, it varies according to the hormonal cycles. In the same way, in a postmenopausal lady, if the lady is on a hormone replacement therapy, then a withdrawal bleeding is accepted or is expected and just because you have withdrawal bleeding is not something we need to be worried or concerned about. So a patient needs to be primed about it right when the hormone replacement therapy started that they can develop a withdrawal bleeding and the timing of this should be explained based on the regime. And any bleeding that is occurring during the withdrawal bleeding is not accepted as an ominous sign and a reason for evaluation. But a bleeding that occurs at a time when you are not expecting this withdrawal bleeding is called as the unscheduled bleeding. And in a postmenopausal lady, which we defined just before, in a postmenopausal lady, when you have this unscheduled bleeding is uh, and this patient is on a hormone replacement therapy, that is when this patient needs to be evaluated further. There have been a lot of studies about a postmenopausal endometrial thickness and though there is no strict consensus about what it should be, the optimal cutoff that is uh, accepted by most of the people is that it should be less than or equal to 4 or 5 millimeters. It should be homogeneous and there should be no lumpy bumpy areas. It should be homogeneous and there should be no focal thickening. And it is Basically understood by all these studies that when you have a thickness which is less than or equal to 4 or 5 millimeters, there is a very high probability that this patient has endometrial atrophy and not something ominous and definitely not something like a malignancy like a endometrial carcinoma. Postmenopausal bleeding when we see, end up seeing it less than 5 millimeters, can be attributed to endometrial atrophy which is also a cause of bleeding and this is not a matter of concern. So what else do we look for other than the endometrial thickness? There have been a lot of studies on the patterns that can be seen and the Doppler and it was found that Doppler does not add significant benefit, added benefit to it. But when you look at the appearance wise, if you see a homogeneous and diffuse thickening, it is most likely hyperplasia. But you might also have cystic areas in hyperplasia. But if you see focal echogenic areas or focal echopore vascular area with a vascular pedicle or cystic areas associated with these echopore or echogenic areas, it is an endometrial polyp. When you see focal areas of uh, endometrial distortion, heterogeneous areas with increased vascularity, poor endomyometrial differentiation, which possibly represents infiltration, then this could represent an endometrial malignancy. But there is so much of overlap in these imaging features that there is no particular impact that one of these imaging features carries. These imaging features is possibly going to add on to your decision making as to what to do further. So, what are the imaging recommendations that are suggested? Ideally, a transabdominal scan is not a good enough modality for us to evaluate a thin endometrium op optimally. However, it has the added benefit of evaluating large lesions or pelvic collections which can be missed out in a transvaginal scan. So, ideally, you should have a transabdominal scan followed by a transvaginal scan.
And when you do a transvaginal scan, you have to do a long axis and short axis evaluation of the entire endometrium. You look at the mid sagittal view, you see a thin homogeneous endometrium, you don't be too happy about it. Look at it along the entire length and width of the uterus because you might have a focal lesion sitting somewhere. So you have to scan the entire endometrium and you also have to look at the entire cervix also because you might have an endocervical or a cervical malignancy which is also common in this age group. If you see fluid in the endometrium, you should measure only layer by layer that is the anterior and the posterior layer gets measured separately and both the layers the thickness of each layer gets added up together and if you see fluid in the endometrial canal it is actually a good way for you to evaluate the inner inner surface of the endometrium so you can look for any subtle submucosal lesions that might be there some polyps or some kind of irregularity in the endometrium it can help you evaluate the surface inner surface of the endometrium also if you are not seeing the endometrium, you should not be staying reassured thinking that the endometrium is very thin, so you are not visualizing it. Rather, if you do not visualize the endometrium, it should warrant further evaluation. You should possibly go ahead with a sonohistogram to evaluate the endometrial canal because this could happen because there is a possibly a large fibroid which is obliterating the canal or it could also be because there is an endometrial malignancy which is actually infiltrating the myometrium and is not giving you a well a good differentiation of the endometrium so it should actually warranty further uh, warrant a further evaluation of the endometrium as per the sru guidelines an endovascular ultrasound or a transvaginal ultrasound is considered abnormal if you have a thickness which is greater than 5 mm if you have focal abnormality or if you have incomplete visualization of the stripe or indistinct margins of the endometrium. The last two reasons should warrant you to go for further evaluation, which most often is either through a sonosalpingogram or um, by a targeted biopsy. So this is an optimal image. You go for a transvaginal scan. You see the entire length of the endometrium, the entire length in the mid sagittal axis. Take the uh, thickness from the echogenic to echogenic area and you are not seeing any focal bumpy areas, look at the cervix, look at the entire endometrium in all the both the axes. It should be homogeneous. So this is the optimal imaging. These are the scenarios that you commonly en encounter. You might see a smooth homogeneous thickening which is endometrial hyperplasia. You might see this heterogeneous area with increased vascularity, infiltration. It's not very common but this is the appearance of an endometrial carcinoma. You can see this kind of a thickening where you see the central image. You can see this kind of a thickening where you see some focal echogenic area. And if you look at the vascularity, you might be able to demonstrate a vascular pedicle. But when you put in, instill some saline into the canal and you do a sonohistogram, you can see this polyp so well. It gets beautifully demonstrated when you are doing a sonohistogram. So that is how a uh, sonohistogram is going to help you evaluate endometrial canal or endometrial lining lesions better. So this is a flow chart that is recommended for how you should be evaluating imaging wise a postmenopausal bleeding patient. You do a trans abdominal and a trans vaginal scan. If the endometrial thickness is less than 5 millimeters then mostly the cause is an endometrial atrophy. So leave this patient alone. This patient does not need to be evaluated further. If you see that uh, you are not able to measure the endometrium or maybe the endometrial thickness is more than 5 millimeters, then do a sonohistogram. When you are doing a sonohistogram, you are seeing that there is a, the you see both the linings separate, so you measure them separately. And if each lining is less than 2 millimeters, then you are getting a total amount of less than 5 millimeters of thickness of the entire endometrium. So it's a thin endometrium basically, which means it's most likely due to endometrial atrophy. If you see diffuse thickening, most likely it is because of uh, hyperplasia and you might want to do a DNC and the sampling of the same. If you see a focal thickening or a polyp polypoidal lesion, you do a targeted biopsy. There can also be a submucosal fibroid which is very well demonstrated or you see an endometrial carcinoma which will look like a heterogeneous lesion which is possibly protruding into the canal and you can easily take a sample from this lesion through hysteroscopic guidance and targeted biopsy of this lesion can be taken. If this patient is on a hormone replacement therapy, 
we expect the accepted thickness can go up to 8 millimeters based on which regime the regimen the patient is following supposing the patient is on a cyclical estrogen and progesterone then ultrasound should be done at the beginning or the end of the cycle if the patient is having an unopposed estrogen being provided then the thickness if it is up to 8 millimeters it is accepted but if it is going more than 8 millimeters then a biopsy of this area of the involved area or if it is a diffuse thickening then um, you don't need to take a targeted biopsy but a biopsy or sampling needs to be taken so in summary when you see that the endometrial thickness is less than or equal to 5 millimeters in a patient having vaginal bleeding post menopause the chance is it's because of endometrial atrophy and you do not need to biopsy such a patient if it is more than 5 millimeters do a sonohistography look if the cause is diffuse or focal and then help guide the biopsy technique but 5 millimeters is not the normal or upper limit of normal in these ladies rather it is an action threshold for these patient it helps you determine whether you should be taking an action or not and if this patient has not presented to you with bleeding and you still have a thickening of more than 5 millimeters it then this patient needs to be evaluated based on the appearance of the endometrial thickness whether there is focal thickening whether it is heterogeneous what kind of vascularity it is dependent on the echo texture or the appearance on the whole and also depending on uh, the clinical picture whether this patient is a high risk patient or whether the patient has any other risk factors for endometrial carcinoma so imaging basically helps as a guidance tool and hopefully this is this was useful for you